Hi guys, this is Jude from EasyTex. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating an easy way to set up an external graphics card on a laptop without taking it apart and without removing your Wi-Fi card from the mini PCIe slot. This upgrade is usually for gaming purposes, graphics design or movie making. It could also come in handy when you want to test or benchmark multiple graphics cards without much hassle. The approach in this video addresses three of the common challenges of using desktop graphics card externally with laptops. First is the odd of having to give up your Wi-Fi card mini PCIe slot in order to attach the eGPU cable. Second is the issue of size, that's the portability of the components required to implement this scheme, more specifically the size of the power adapters. Third is of course the issue of cost, as you probably know, there is a number of more sophisticated eGPU docks out there for using desktop graphics card externally with laptops. But such solutions come in at premiums and for the most part they would only work with a Thunderbolt 3 port which you wouldn't find in older computers. Actually, that could be the fourth challenge, that's the absence of Thunderbolt 3 ports on older laptops. Now, compared to such all-in-one solutions, the approach in this video will cost significantly less and would work with older models of laptops, which I think are in more need for such upgrade. Of course, there is also the issue of compatibility with the different components involved. I'll be giving more detail on that as well as the possible alternatives to take at the end of the video. I will also be giving my overall assessment of the effectiveness of this solution, whether or not it's worth investing in and what precautions one needs to take when implementing this solution. And with that said, we're going to jump right in and see how to make this work. So first, here are the components I will be using, an EXP GDC 8.0 external laptop GPU dock. Now there are several versions of this dock, but the two popular ones are the mini PCIe and the Express Card versions. Here I'll be using the Express Card version. As you can see, it has an Express Card on one end and a HDMI connector on the other end. This eGPU also comes with an ATX PSU power cable, which I won't be using in this video because my power adapter doesn't require it. Now for those who would want to try this out, I'll be leaving direct links from where you can order each of the components I'll be using for this video down the video description. So normally the ATX PSU power cable is used to connect the dock to a power source like this. This is the PM420PBHEC power adapter, a 420 watt switched mode power supply for desktop CPUs. It's a good source of power for your graphics card, but obviously this isn't as portable and flexible as one might wish. The size, the weight, and the number of connectors protruding from the box doesn't make it so attractive for a portable design. But that is because it was originally designed for desktops and servers, not graphics docks. Moreover, there are even bigger ones supplying as high as 750 to 1000 watt of power. Now, using such power supplies for this solution is more like improvising. So, what power supply should one get for the EXP GDC dock? Well, something more convenient to carry and less complex to manage. The Dell D220P01 power supply comes in as a perfect alternative to the SMPS. This so-called ultra-small form factor adapter is not particularly small, but significantly smaller than most SMPS of similar ratings. It's a 220 watt power supply with a single 8-pin 12 volt output connector to match the 8-pin port in your eGPU. Now you may be wondering, isn't 220 watt too low for most graphics cards? Well, probably not. I will talk about that in more details towards the end of the video. For now, let's just get this to work. Next, you may need this 6-pin graphics card cable if you are using a bigger graphics card that requires additional power and has a 6-pin port somewhere around it. Now, this cable doesn't come with your EXP GDC, so you might have to order it if you need one, or you can make one from your old desktop power supply. Again, all links are provided in the video description. You will of course need a laptop with an express card slot. Here are some common ones I could lay my hands on. Now on this page, you will find a comprehensive list of supported laptops according to brands. Now not all laptops in this list have the express card slots. 
This list is for all laptops that are supported by all variants of the EXP GDC dock, which includes the Mini PCIe, the Express Card, the NGFF, and the M.2x4 versions. So for laptop compatibility using the Express Card version, you would first check that your laptop is in this list and also that it has an Express Card slot. Finally, you will need a graphics card. Now, here is a list of the graphics cards supported by the EXP GDC 8.0. This list is based on users' feedbacks. From my experience trying out this eGPU, some graphics cards that are not listed here could still be supported by this dock. So, if you have the possibility of testing out other graphics cards that are not in this list, then it might be worth trying out to see if it works for you. And by the way, not all desktop graphics cards out there would outperform your integrated graphics card. So do some research before ordering a graphics card to avoid downgrading your graphics performance and also wasting some money. Now I will go ahead and connect these pieces together, a very straightforward process. There are no strict rules about the order of connection, but I just feel safer connecting the AC power cable after other connections. So first, I hook up the 8-pin power connector from the power supply. Then, the HDMI connector from the express card data line. Now I will attach the graphics card to the PCIe express slot. Hook up the express card to the laptop. And if your graphics card needs extra power, then you can use the 6-pin graphics card cable to extend power to your card. And finally, attaching your power supply to the AC cable. And that is the basic setup for the system. If you wish to try out multiple graphics cards, remember to shut down the system, disconnect AC power, and then you can remove the card from the express slot. And that is it on the hardware side. Now to demonstrate the software side of the setup and the configurations, I'll be using this Zotac GTX 750Ti. Here, as soon as you attach the setup to an AC power source, you should get this connected device notification sound which shows that the card is recognized. Most cards will start downloading and installing the graphics card drivers automatically. Sometimes you will also get this additional notification stating that your device is being set up. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't show the progress of the setup. So you just need to wait until you get another notification saying the device is ready. And then it may prompt you to restart your laptop to complete the setup. Here without removing the graphics card, go ahead and restart your computer. Now even if it doesn't prompt you to restart your laptop, it's advisable to do so once the setup is complete. Otherwise your PC might keep running on the internal graphics card. Now upon restarting, you should have your graphics card fully set up. You can check the GPU activity icon in the notification area. You can also go to your device manager to check that both your internal and external graphics card are present and the drivers are fully installed with no errors. If for some reason any error occurs during the driver installation, then you should have a yellow triangle next to the driver indicating such error. If you encounter this kind of error, try restarting your laptop and check to see if it disappears. If not, then try to update the driver by simply right clicking and selecting update drivers from the list. If that still doesn't fix the problem, then you might need to manually download and install the required drivers. 
For the case of this graphics card, I will simply go to Google and search drivers for GeForce 750 Ti. Then click on the results from GeForce.com. On this page, I will click on drivers. And under the manual driver search, I will select the parameters that match the specifications of my graphics card on operating system. Of course, yours might be entirely different, so you will need to select what matches your specifications. Here, I already selected the parameters that match my card specifications, so I will just hit start search. From the search results, I will select the latest driver and on the page that follows, I will hit download and wait for the download to complete. After downloading, I will run by simply double clicking and then follow the instructions to complete the settings. Now after the installation, you might need to restart your laptop to complete the process. Now for NVIDIA graphics card and possibly some other cards as well, after the driver installations, when you right click on the desktop, you should have the NVIDIA control panel option in the list. Here if you click on it, it should open up a control interface like this. From here you can adjust the settings to suit your needs. There is quite a good number of settings here. They are grouped in categories. We have the 3D settings and the video settings. And under each of them you will find a bunch of other sub settings you can adjust to match your gaming setup. Now I will not be going into much details about the settings because it will differ depending on the graphics card you are using. But usually you would have a lot of settings to play around with and you can get a lot of guides online on the optimal settings for your graphics card. Now I'll be doing a bit of performance testing for the GTX 750 Ti. This is not a benchmarking video, but to answer two important questions. One is on how much power such graphics cards actually require to run. Talking about how big of a power adapter you need. And second is the question on how effective such graphics enhancement can be in terms of actual performance. Here I'll be comparing the GTX 750 Ti to my internal HD graphics 4000 in terms of how many frames per second you can get on each card. At the same time, I will be showing a real-time display of the amount of power the GTX is taking during the process. Generally speaking, most graphics cards would do well with this Dell 220 watt power supply without having to search at any point. Maybe with a few exceptions, possibly with some overclocking and extreme settings, then you may need a bigger power supply. But let me break this down a bit. As I mentioned earlier, these graphics cards were originally designed for desktop CPUs. So usually when you see their power supply requirements going above 450, 650, 750 or 1000 watts, then that should be the power requirement for the entire box. That's the desktop CPU and this includes everything on the motherboard, the processor, the speakers, the optical drive, the hard disks, keyboard, mouse, all the peripherals and of course the GPU. What the EXP GDC does is basically to isolate the GPU functions away from the motherboard. So the graphics data gets processed on the graphics card and then transmitted back to the motherboard through the express card data line. So the power needed on the EXP GDC is just for the graphics card and not the entire system. In addition, the EXP GDC user guide also recommends a maximum power input of 220 watt going through the 8-pin connector. Now this doesn't mean that bigger sources of power like the PM420 PB will cause the EXP GDC to burn out. However, I think attempting to draw more than 220 watts through the 8-pin connector could possibly damage the EXP GDC. Now, in addition to the 220 watt of power from the Dell adapter, it might interest you to know that the Express card is also able to supply as much as 75 watts of power to the EXP GDC if needed. So if your graphics card for some extreme reason tries to draw up to 300 watt of power, these two power sources are still able to handle it. 
Moreover, the Dell power supply is able to surge above 220 watt as well. Now to put that to perspective, here is a recent article comparing the soon-to-be-released NVIDIA RTX 2080 to the currently available GTX 1080. If you go down to this table where it gives the actual spec comparisons, it shows that the power draw for the 1080 is about 180 watt, while for the 2080 is 215 watt. Here it also shows the recommended system power for each of the cards. Now if you are using an older model that requires more power, a typical sign you will notice is a loud beeping sound from the card indicating insufficient power. However, this beep doesn't imply that the card has exhausted the 220 watt power supply. It simply requires you to extend some power directly to the graphics card using the 6 pin connector like this. So generally speaking, the 220 watt power adapter should be fine in just about all cases. Next is the issue of performance, and the question here is how much of a performance boost does one get from such upgrade? Is it worth the cost to use an eGPU in place of or to support your integrated graphics card? Now the answer to this question depends on what you already have running on your computer. Of course, not all external graphics cards will do better than your integrated graphics cards, and not all graphics cards will work with the EXP GDC. This is an important parameter to consider if you set to implement this solution. For my case, there was a huge performance improvement using the GTX 750 Ti compared to my Intel HD 4000 in terms of how many frames per second I was able to get. Here I'm extending to this 1920x1080 display. Of course, the performance will change if you are doing some 4K gaming, but the results here show an improvement from an average of about 6 frames per second to almost 50 frames per second and a maximum of 83 frames per second, which is such a huge performance improvement. So in this case, it's absolutely worth the upgrade. And talking about the power consumption, I tried running the benchmark with ultra high settings to see how much of a power draw this would cause but surprisingly it kept it below 100 watt the entire time so there is still a lot of juice i can draw from this 220 watt dell adapter i tested this setup with five graphics cards from different manufacturers and out of these five three worked fine and two didn't some online suggestions pointed that these two cards for some reasons are incompatible with the express card reader now this limitation is not unexpected because even the high-end all-in-one graphics docks like the Asus ROG SD Station 2 supports only NVIDIA GeForce GTX 9 and 10 series and later, and also the AMD Radeon R9 and RTX and later. So if you set out to implement this scheme, then you may need to do some research on the compatibility of the required components and be sure you have all checked before placing any orders. Also check that the performance improvement is worth the investment. There are several online sources where you can check performance comparisons between different graphics cards. You can use those to check if your intended upgrade is what your buck and that is it for this tutorial hope this was able to help you out leave us a post in the comment if you have any questions or feedbacks drop us a like if you found it useful and share with anyone you think might want to see don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications on future tech support videos like this one thanks for watching and see you in the next one